Alright guys, Ted Crubber here again today, and today is Thursday, the day you're watching this video. I'm recording this in advance, because right now I'm on holiday, so the fact of the matter is that either I don't make any videos for the next four days, or I, you know, make these videos that I've recorded in advance. So hopefully this is okay. Today I'm going to be talking about the CDBL Miami format. Thanks to Mary Vertigo for the comments suggesting that I talk about this, because it's actually uh, more interesting than I thought it was, and I'm sure a lot of you guys are confused. So we're going to go through all of the complexities today, the fact that there are a 10 team playoffs this year and teams even if technically you didn't win a single series in the pro league for example you could still qualify for the playoffs we're going to go through exactly how that's possible today and how it's all shaping up so yeah like if you guys enjoy subscribe if you are new as always i would greatly appreciate it and let's hop right into it so to note, I'm recording this in advance of all of these Pro League matches. If you, This is not a Pro League recap, so if you guys want to find out the results of the Pro League, I'll leave a link in the pinned comment and the description box below so you can see all of these results. These matches have happened so far this week that uh, I have not been able to cover and look at it. It's just how it is, unfortunately. Man needs a holiday at some point. So, look, these are the matches that are going on tonight. Thursday, Phase Units, EG, E6, 100 Thieves, UYU and Splice versus LG, which should be a fun one to close the day. Two very new teams that could be very good indeed we'll have to see so yes these matches that have gone on so far haven't been able to cover them we'll leave a link down below if you want to see how things transpired let's put it that way so these are the current standings in the pro league as of recording they have definitely changed so these are not the current standings i guess but you know they'll have changed since now but this is a good basis of which to work on lg and inning with six are out of contention for the top four opta gaming e united 100 thieves are locked in no matter what happens and uh, these rankings will be key when we go look at in a few minutes time exactly how the seeding is done for the CDBL Miami event. So just to make things clear this was the season schedule announced right at the start of the season back in November. So we had Las Vegas in December, the PLQs in January, then the Pro League all the way through to the end of June where we are now, Fort Worth in March, uh, London which wasn't announced at the time in May, and then Anaheim, and then this is the CWL Finals, also known as CWL Miami. So typically what would happen is that we'd have two seasons of the Pro League, two stages, and we'd have a player playoffs after each of them. This season, it's a little bit of an interesting and to some degree questionable format because we have the CWL Finals, which effectively is a playoffs, all the best teams in the Pro League, and then just a month later in August, which is going on in Los Angeles, August 16th to the 18th, I'm pretty sure the date's there. So it's interesting having them both back to back, considering this Finals is effectively like you know, all the biggest teams come together in a playoff format, who's going to win, and then champs is effectively the same thing a little bit later, but instead we now have a load of open teams as well. So, interesting format, but we'll just have to see how it transpires. So yes, this is also known effectively as CWL Miami, and alongside it, we have the open side, the amateur finals for the year, and depending on how what happens at that event, they can then qualify for the World Championship and actually potentially win the World Championship, which hasn't been possible all year because the professionals and the amateurs have been separated pretty much the entire year. So that's what the season looked like at the start. And here we go then. So these are also known as CWL Miami, CWL Pro League 2019 playoffs, 19th to the 21st on the Miami Beach Convention Center. So if you're going, excellent stuff. $1.25 million on the line. This is a big deal, of course. So these are the way the prizes are split up. $500,000 for first, $300,000 for second, and yeah, a lot of money. But what you will notice is 9th through 10th both get twenty like $12,500 which is like typically in playoffs, it's just eight teams. The top eight teams go through, the bottom, you know, four to, or the bottom eight teams, I guess, go home. And, you know, typically how it's been is that these bottom two teams go to relegation and then the other two just stay in the league. But of course, this time there are no relegation because we're preparing for a franchising next year coming around the corner very soon. So 
This is how the play-in works, to make this clear. So this is the prize pools, this is the play-in. So fifth through eighth in division A and B will go into a play-in which happens on the first day. So I'm pretty sure the play-in happens the first day on the Friday, the 19th, and then the rest of the bracket happens on the Saturday and the Sunday. Or maybe they will put some of the matches on the Friday, not exactly sure how the schedule's working yet, but this is at least how the format works. So this is a single elimination best of five bracket so there's no double a limb here whoever wins two matches before they lose a single match will go through so only two teams out of the eight will get through which I think is fair enough you've had all these weeks of the league to get into the top four anyway this is effectively your last chance saloon but if you win two series before you lose zero series then you will go on to qualify for the playoffs and then will potentially be able to go on and win the entire thing but it's still not as easy for you as it is for the the best teams, the highest seeded teams, which we'll have a look at now. So this graphic is courtesy of Nick Arts. I'll leave his links down below and uh, I'll go into more detail on this because effectively this is just the winner's bracket. I'll have a look at what the loser's bracket will look like as well in just a second here. So, okay, this is how it's going to work. So the play in round one right now, based on these rankings, this is how it will look. But of course, you know, these rankings are subject to change, but let's just work through it as if these are the steady rankings. They'll make it easier to have a look at. So first thing to note in the first round of the play in fifth in division A it will play eighth in division B and then sixth will play seventh which makes a lot of sense so let's have a look at this again so midnight playing enigma six in the first round midnight will play enigma six evil geniuses will play units envy will play uiu elevate will play luminosity and it goes like crisscross kind of fashion and this is how the first round will be playing out then in the second round, whoever wins this match will play against whoever wins this match. And the winner will then go on to the rest of the tournament. The losers of these games, like up to this line here, will be eliminated from contention. And then the real tournament effectively begins. And this is how it works. So Splice, who are right now the fourth place team in Division B, they actually have a quite significantly harder time than the top three. If you're in the top three, or especially if you're number one, you actually have to play one less match to win than you do if you're a team like Splice. So you really don't want to be in this, in this fourth place position in an ideal world. So there's more to it really than just straight up qualifying for the Pro League playoffs. You need in an ideal world to be like first seed is, is very, very beneficial as we'll see. Because you see what happens here. Splice in winners round one, they are the number four seed. So are Reciprocity down here at the current time. They will play against the team that qualifies from the you know, from the play-in effectively. So they will have one more match to play than Opta Gaming will because they will then play the winner of this match. And then the winner of that will play against 100 Thieves Gen G. So pretty much if you're first, second or third seed, you don't have to play another match. Whereas if you're fourth seed, you have to play an extra match so in an ideal world as you'll be looking over these next couple of weeks of pro league action you don't want to be fourth seed in an ideal world but it's going to be quite difficult for splice to get out of there maybe they can get above heretics and uh, be difficult for reciprocity for sure so this is what it looks like let's have a look at my bracket so i put together this bracket this is not like particular predictions it's just uh, i've just done what came to the top of my head it doesn't really matter who went through and who didn't this is to show how the situation works in losers bracket as well because the losers bracket is rather complex complicated especially with a 10 team playoffs it gets gets kind of awkward so as we said let's say envy and lg are the teams that make it through the play-in as you can see right here let's say that out of these lot envy get through out of these lot lg get through could all change but you know this is what we're going with for now they will play up against the number four seeds in splice and reciprocity the winners of these matches will play the number one seed in the divisions opta gaming and the united so you know, they will have a match against the fourth seed or the qualifying team. So that's how the four, the uh, number one seed gets a, gets a benefit in this way. Then the second versus third seeds will play their match. Whoever wins that will then play against the winner of the first seed or the fourth seed and the qualifiers. That's what these matches are right here. These are your winners semi-finals effectively. But, however, 
If you are this team, either 100 Thieves or Gen G, and you happen to lose, you will actually go, as far as I'm aware, to the first round of losers bracket, because you've only played one match, so you don't get an automatic buy to the second round. So uh, this is kind of a key point, and uh, and yeah, so whoever loses between 100 Thieves and Gen G, I'm pretty sure, will go to the very first round of losers, where they will play either Envy or Splice, or whoever happened to lose between the fourth seed and the, the team who comes through the play-in. So, uh, um, you know, this is kind of a big deal. We could get some very big teams going out very early on in 10th place, let's put it that way. And then the rest of the bracket kind of works how you would expect. So in this situation, I have Reciprocity losing to E United. They will play against Gen G if they beat Envy. Splice, let's say they lose to Optic. They'll play against the winner of LG or Heretics. I've gone for LG here, but it could be either way. And then it works through kind of as normal. We could have an Optic 100 of these match up very, very early on. But of course, nothing is set in stone in the Pro League quite as yet. So we'll have to see how that goes. But uh, yeah, at the end of the day, it may well come down to 100 Thieves up to gaming final, as is tradition. So there's still double elimination, still possible for a matchup like this not to cost the entire tournament of a fantastic final in theory. We can still get Optic running through losers. Let's look at it that way. So some more key things to mention about this event before we finish. The entire weekend, while all of that good stuff is going on, the amateur finals are also taking place. This is a prize pool of $150,000 going on at the same time. These are the prize which is something that you might find quite interesting because as we saw a second ago if you place ninth through 10th at the pro event you get like twelve and a half thousand dollars if you play seventh through eighth you get like forty seven and a half thousand dollars you get more money for uh, winning the amateur side than you do for coming fifth through sixth in the pro league side which is interesting good incentives really but at the same time the incentives are kind of warped because you get some teams that um you know, players that could have tried to get in the Pro League, but instead they're playing through the amateur side because there's a lot more money here uh, relative. And you can, if you're not going to win the whole thing in the Pro side, then you can get a hell of a lot of money by playing through the amateur side. Let's put it that way. So these are the finals and they will play all the way to their conclusion. But for a lot of teams, it's not just about winning. This is once again an open event, so anyone can turn up and play, which kind of makes the previous events obsolete, apart from the pro points that a lot of teams will have established. So the seeding is still rather important. But it's crucial to note here, the top 16 teams in the open side, so it's going to work exactly how Anaheim did, exactly how London did, exactly how Fort Worth did in terms of the open side, is separated from the professionals, but if you make top 16, you qualify for the Call of Duty World Championship. I think the World Championship is going to run on the same format as before, when we have eight pools of four different teams, probably going to be some horrible tiebreakers. I talked about it last year, I wasn't happy with it, but it's going to happen again this year, so it is what it is. And anyway, so the top two teams in each pool will be pro teams from the pro league side based on their performances probably at playoffs. And then the other two teams will be some of the teams that make it through into this top 16. So a lot of players that you may never have really heard of could pull off a top 16 at the CWB on Miami, the open side of it, and could make it to COD champs. And what's really cool about that is finally there's going to be an opportunity for teams like Mindfreak, for example, who did win the previous event at Anaheim. They won London as well they came second at Fort Worth to that face clown black team in the finals those guys can actually have a chance at champs assuming they get top 16 hopefully they will if they don't for example and they do crash out earlier on than that then they will not be at the COD World League Championships even though they've won all those last events so interesting system let's put it that way but they should place top 16, no problem. If they do, they will be there at Cold Champs and they will have an opportunity to actually prove themselves against the best teams in the game and finally make some sort of run at Champs that we haven't seen even be possible earlier on this year. So it's cool that we still have some sort of combination of professional and amateur scenes because we've seen in the past how it's really fun seeing players that have not been in the league all year finally come up against league teams and try and prove that they should have had the league spot. And Mind Freak arguably have been playing lately a lot better Better than at least four of the teams in the Pro League, like say at Anaheim, your Luminosity Gamings or UIUs, your Envies, for example. Like I think Mindfreak were a better team than those guys were at this event, and Mind and uh, Midnight as well. I would say. 
So maybe Mindfreak are around a top 12 team right now, which would be kind of cool to see if they can make some sort of decent run of champs. We'll have to see how things go. But anyway, like if you guys enjoyed the video, subscribe if you are new as always. I'd greatly appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed this info. If you need anything else clarified, leave it down below. And yes, the Pro League matches for tonight are as follows. So uh, yeah, hope you guys tune in and watch those. I probably won't be. I'm going to be chilling abroad. But uh, yeah, um, I'll be back next week. Let's put it that way. Thank you guys so much for watching as always. And... I will see you next time.